Camtasia 2021 just came out and I've been using Camtasia for a long time, like eight or 10 years. Uh, it's been a long time I've been using it. I've seen massive increases in how good this thing is and 2021 really set the bar a lot higher. 2020 was a big disappointment. It really didn't live up to what TechSmith has really set in the past, but 2021 really, really increases the bar and changes things. Now I'm a Mac user for most of this stuff. I have PC, but I generally edit and do everything recording wise on a Mac. So these are my favorite parts of Camtasia 2021 for Mac users. Now, after using the software a little bit, I found four things I really love about it, two things I like, and a couple of improvements that need to be made. But let's start off with the things that I love about this software. The first and biggest and most important thing to me as a video creator, as somebody who likes to go through and has been limited with Camtasia. Because Camtasia is in a weird spot. It's in the process of becoming a video editor and also screen record, kind of dangling those lines. And this most recent one helps to become more of a video editor. And that's the ability to add LUTs. Essentially what it does is it allows you to change the color profile of your image. And it does a lot of cool things here. Uh, so to do it, all you have to do is go over into the visual effects area. And then from there, grab the color LUT and drag it onto your timeline. You'll notice over in the properties area, it popped up now. This is another thing that's awesome. You can turn things on and off right away. But if you'll notice, the colors here are relatively flat. Everything is kind of a, a flattish kind of look. Uh, the white here is a little blown out around the blue on there. Uh, it's a little darker on this side. Nothing looks super vibrant. And when I turn that back on and go to the default option, which is enhanced contrast by default, you can see my skin cones are totally different than what they were before. So that's with it off, that's with it on and you can change how intense that look is. So this to me is a little too intense. It's not super realistic to what it is, uh, but if we dial it back just a little bit, we can make some of the colors pop a little bit. Again, it's not a big change, but it does kind of get noticed there. And you can actually add your own LUTs or ones from your camera manufacturer or that you can buy online. I use Sony cameras, so I went on and grabbed a whole bunch of Sony ones here. Uh, this is their Blockbuster pack. Uh, but if I go to native, I can see what it looks like. And if I ramp that up, you can tell that's terrible. Nobody should use that ever. Uh, but as we go through, there are some decent ones like this one. Again, terrible, but it's good to know that you have the options. Now, my next hunt is to find some good versions of LUTs that I can like, uh, and you can add and remove them. It's really easy. Uh, I just downloaded it from the website, pop them in, it's ready to go, super easy. The second thing I'm super in love with is the ability to mask. Now previously we've had the mask tool for a while. We can go in and drag on and I can say, hey, I just wanted to grab my eyeball and that's all good. The problem here is that I only have two shapes. I have oval or rectangle. I can edit some of these things, but they don't really do anything. Uh, and that's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna remove that just by hitting this little X, which is also another nice new feature. Uh, but we're gonna go in and let's say in the annotations area, uh, I wanted to make this star and I really just wanna show what's behind my eye. That's it. If we look at the timeline, that's on track two. I have my regular video on track one and then I'm gonna go back into visual effects, grab the media mat and drag it onto the shape. Now what it does is allows me to go through and just go directly to that shape. This was kind of possible before, but it was a lot more of a pain in the butt. Now it's really easy to do. You can change the intensity so you can kind of focus in on things. Uh, you can go ahead and do an, a reverse so it keeps what was not covered up and puts the whatever else there in black. Uh, you can also do luminosity so you can change kind of where the spotlight is a little bit. There's lots of options that you have here. This is a really cool feature that I like a lot. The next one I really love is the ability to enhance audio. So if I go over into my media here and I'm gonna drag on uh, an audio clip, usually this takes me a long time to figure out, okay, well, I need to go in, I'm gonna cut this out so it's the proper length, which is gonna be the same thing as normal. But now I have to figure out how loud this is supposed to be. Do I change my gain or do I change the levels here to dump them down? I don't really know. And a lot of times, your voice is gonna change in volume, you're gonna have higher and lower parts. It's just a real pain in the butt to figure out exactly where this stuff goes. So what they've done now is they've added an emphasize area, which allows whatever you wanna be heard to speak out and to be heard. It's really easy. Uh, so you're just gonna to go to audio effects and you'll have a new one here called emphasize. All you do is click, hold and drag, bring it to the track that you want. Uh, so I'm gonna bring it down to my video track that has audio embedded in it. And now when I play this back, uh, you'll be able to hear my voice over the music really easily. 
Uh, it's really nice. You can change how strong the emphasis is. You can change if it ramps in or out and where that ramp in or out is at. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic tool. It will save you time editing and that's what this is all about. Uh, a lot of these options just make things faster and easier. Uh, even if these were possible to do before, now that I can just go in and just blank apply something like this to a long track or to a number of them, it makes life so much better. And the last thing that I think is a total game changer when it comes to this and really will speed up my personal workflow is auto animate. Previously, whenever you wanted to add or animate something, when you zoomed in or changed your frame, uh, you'd have to go over to animations, click on custom, drag it down into the timeline. And then from there, you'd have to kind of figure out what you wanted to do, uh, what you wanted to have as your beginning and end. It wasn't a big deal, but it took some time. Now with auto animate, which can be found here at the top. So we have our pointer, our pan tool, our crop, and now we have auto animate. We can go in and at any point in time, we can say, hey, I want the scale of this not to be 50%, but I want it to be 75. And uh, maybe I'll have it move over there. And if you look at our timeline here, as we blow it up, uh, you'll see that the animation was automatically added in. I can just go in, hit the play button, and it zooms in and does everything. And the great thing here is if I if I wanted to zoom into a certain spot and then, hey, I wanted to zoom back out because I just want to focus on my shoulder for whatever reason right there, I can go back out, recenter it, and look. The animation's already edit back. It's easy, it's quick. It doesn't require any additional clicks from me, which saves me lots and lots of time. Because what I find myself often doing is going to animations and just click holding and dragging on animation because the only one I ever use is custom. And this just saves me so much time in getting that set up. Now I have three things that I really like about it. These aren't game changers for me, but they're things that are nice to have that make the workflow easier. And I'll explain a little bit here in just a second. The first one is gonna be transitions. There are 75 new transitions that are in here. There's a lot, a lot of them quite honestly are not very good, but the ones that are good are really good. Uh, I still want to see some improvements here, uh, so I'm just going to clip this one real fast, and I want to say I want these arrow slices uh, to go in there. So as it transitions through, you get these really nice animations that weren't there before. The only thing I wish that we could do is change the colors on these. It would be awesome to be able to set our own custom colors on those so it can match your branding, match whatever you're working on. You could set the tone, the feel, uh, and not have the presets. I'm sure that's coming down the line, but uh, until that comes, uh, that's gonna be a feature that I really, really want uh, to have and will be very happy with. The next one we have is the proxy video. Essentially what this does is in your media center here, uh, you can right click on a video and you can go to proxy video. Now I already have one created, but I can delete that proxy video at any time. Uh, but what that proxy video does is this video clip that I have here is a 4K video clip shot at 10 bit. It's a monster for most computers to deal with, especially as they get longer. I've been working on a 35-ish minute uh, review of my car uh, that I haven't been able to complete because my computer just has not been able to keep up with the footage. When you scrub through, it gets real choppy, but you notice how when I'm scrubbing through here, this is clean. There are no drop frames. Everything is just instant. And that's partially due to the proxy video. It creates a lower res version to show on your timeline and to show on your canvas. And then you can just go through, do your work. But when you export, it's pulling from the original file, the high quality file. This is gonna make it so much easier for me to export things in 4K because now I don't have to edit in 4K. I can just do the export, which takes time, but I can go through and do the editing itself at a lower resolution. And then when the export comes, I won't be losing any quality or anything like that. It will automatically be at the highest quality that I set it to. Now, there's a couple things that are not perfect about Camtasia 2021. And really, I have like three of them. I already mentioned one, but I'm not gonna count that where I wanna be able to change these colors here because I think that's gonna be coming. I'm not super worried about that, especially because these transitions are brand new. I'm happy. Uh, but what I really want is I do all of my workflow now on M1 Apple stuff. I told you I primarily am a Mac user. I do have a PC, but really I'm a Mac user thrown through. I have a MacBook Air and a Mac Mini, and those are my two devices that I use everything with. Now Camtasia, unfortunately, is not optimized for the M1 chip. It doesn't work with Apple stuff without going through a translation layer, uh, and 
What that means is you get worse performance. Now, apparently they're working on a new one that will be able to go through with that, but it wouldn't have been really nice to have that at launch time so that it would have just covered all of those kind of uh, areas there. The second one has been a gripe of mine for a while, and the next two, honestly, are gripes of mine for a while. Uh, the first one I have here is in annotations. I strongly dislike the limited number of shapes that we have here. If I pull this ellipse in here, uh, you can see that I have that set. I can try to do this by hand and make it into a circle as close as possible, which is super hard. I can go over to the properties and edit it perfectly to be a circle if I want uh, and lock them together. But really what I want to be able to do is just grab a circle. I, I don't want to be able to do extra work. I just want to drag it and have a circle be ready. I don't want to have to sit there and figure out if it's a circle or not. Uh, so that would be one thing that I really change with that. The other one is this shape. This shape drives me crazy. When you look at it, you think it is a rectangle, but it's not. If you look very closely at these edges, they are rounded over. And what drives me crazy about this is if you drag this out to be the full size of your screen, let's say you wanted to change the background color, but you still needed the canvas there, the corners are still exposed. So if you have a video going on, uh, if you have a different bright color background or a dark color background or something high contrast, it shows through. There is no reason for this to be rounded over. It needs to be just a set rectangle that is resizable as this one is just without these corners. They already added the ability to round corners on pretty much anything in the software this year. Stop rounding these corners, it drives me crazy. And then the last one I have is SVG. I really, really, really want SVG image support. I'm gonna drag in a picture here, uh, which is my desktop background. Uh, it's just, it's literally a desk that has a bunch of paint and stuff on it. Uh, but the problem here is that if I, let's say, had a logo or something, I wanted it to be bigger, or I didn't want it to pixelate at all when I zoomed in. The problem with this is that on a traditional image, if I zoom in on it, like a regular, not picture, but like, like say a logo or something like that, it's going to pixelate. Now, SVGs don't do that. They do not change with what's going on. So in this one here, if I click on this and let's say I bring the scale way up, you can see the quality gets worse. No matter what I do, this paint will never look as good at 500% as it does at 100%. And see, it gets better and better as smaller it gets. Now, that's a huge problem for me because I use lots of SVG files. I create a lot of vector art and I wanna be able to use it. Uh, and right now my only way to do it is to set it at a really super large size, which means really super large files, and then I have to bring them down in size inside of Camtasia. If we take a look here in our library uh, and we let's say pull up our icons here, uh, let's grab uh, education icon and let's say we want a bullseye because that screams education. That's fine, but as I make this thing bigger again, it gets pixelated. Uh, if we, this was an SVG file, no matter how big I made this, this thing would retain perfect quality the whole way through. You would not see any edges or jagged edges or pixelization. It would be perfect the entire time. And that's what I'm looking for. So overall, I'm really, really happy with Camtasia 2021. There's some things that can be improved, but overall, this is a big step and I'm really, really happy with where it's at what it's doing and where the software overall seems to be heading. Let me know what your favorite features are, what could be improved, or if I missed anything here in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you in our next video.